of having lunch with Grace Lee Ball as well. She was prepping for a panel at the Chinese Progressive Association. And I remember that immediately when we sat down, we were going to ask her some questions, right? But she asked us instead, so what do you think about the current state of the world? <laughs> so we were pretty taken back because we were like, whoa. And then, but she followed with, um, I've had enough books and I've had enough documentaries. I want to hear about what do you think. So we were just so, um, so honored. And we answered that through our youth program, Youth Mojo, and through just community and political education, like workshops we've had, we understand that the world has been and is heavily stricken with injustices and so much oppression. And so after, so we just had a lot of anger of like at these injustices, and we had a lot of frustration within us as young budding um, activists and organizers because we often we felt like uh, we often discredited our own work, and we felt like we weren't doing enough in um, a movement for change and um, like an overarching large scale change in this world. And um, that's when she referred back to her youth, uh, her work with youth uh, in Detroit. And how that, although many people saw Detroit as a place of despair and poverty, she viewed Detroit as a place of, resist, of, resili of resilience and resistance. Um, and that youth was an integral part of that vision for um, change because they were deceived. And this really reassured us the importance of the youth voice and movement and really gave us a zeal to continue uplifting youth voices. So this raised a question for us. How do we do that? Um, at that point in time, um, I was a high school sophomore and I was really struggling with a lot of mental health issues. And often I was um, silencing my own struggles and my narrative and telling that um, I wasn't enough. And so, but through Grace, I learned, uh, she really taught me that to change the world and evolve uh, as human beings, we have to first grow ourselves through storytelling, whether metaphysically or dialectically. And Grace and others in my community really taught me the importance of vulnerability and storytelling. Mm -hmm. So I learned that to be vulnerable is to recognize the complexities and the multifaceted nature of our inherent humanity. And that means our, all our experiences, traumas, and our stories. Um, and at that point, I accepted that I wasn't physically or mentally well. So through telling my story, I was able to embrace myself fully, which is an essential healing process that um, allowed me to just concentrate on just activism, reflections, and healing. So these lessons really inspired me to break my prior stagnancy and continue to build movement for myself and my community. So with a newfound perspective on the importance of love, honesty, and empathy, I strive to create, uh, to become a mentor in my youth space and also other spaces to continue to sol stand in solidarity with my community members, uh, create sto spaces where people can uh, feel whole and stop this violence against vulnerability and storytelling. I'll be going off to college this fall, and um, that means I may have to, thank you, I may have to <laughs> shed away um, my youth um, identity or it will transform into another identity, but I'll continue to take these lessons with me. Um, for Grace and her visions for change have left an everlasting impression on my growing identities as a community member, Asian American organizer, and overall as a human being. Um, as one of my community, I will continue to uplift the stories um, that have so often been marginalized and silenced. And in doing so, I am, I am ingraining Grace's lessons in the creation of a more equitable, sustainable, and compassionate world. And I will continue to do so. Thank you.